What was uh what was another one? Uh Betty White was in what was another bad movie that Betty White was in? Hard Rain with Christian Slater Slater and Morgan Freeman. No, uh you didn't uh, you don't remember that one? That was pretty good. Christian Slater, I saw you in Broken Arrow. <laughs> I think the cold open is gonna end with uh Zach doing an impression of Morgan Slater. Uh Morgan Slater. Morgan <laughs> Slater. I just ran the two of them together. What? Morgan Slater? Barrett again from What the Pod Was That and the All About Nothing podcast for Everplay Sports and Social League. Fall registration is open now for a bunch of leagues, including Wednesday and Thursday kickball at B and M Avenues in West Columbia, Tuesday Super Recreational Kickball at B Avenue in West Columbia, Indoor Volleyball on Mondays and Tuesdays at the Tri-City Leisure Center in West Columbia, Softball on Sundays and Mondays at Pacific Park in Columbia, Tuesday 10-Week Bowling at Bolero in Casey, Wednesday Soccer in West Columbia, Pickleball on Mondays at the Casey Tennis and Fitness Center. Center. Registration for all fall leagues is open through August 21st, except Tuesday bowling at Bolero. Registration is open through August 5th. Also, registration is now open for three to four person teams for the eighth Masters of Putt Putt at Frankie's Fun Park on Friday, August 23rd. Sign up now as this event will sell out. Register by August 22nd. It's a lot of fun, and if you're in the Columbia area, you should definitely sign up now. So check out everplaysocial.com for details and registration. Everplay Sports and Social League. Play, socialize, and have fun. Hi, it's me from the Welcome to Wonderland podcast. Are you looking for the perfect blend of nostalgia and patriotism in your wardrobe? Look no further than ZJZ Designs, available now at ZJZDesigns.com. Their exclusive t-shirt collection features stunning designs like the iconic Plymouth Barracuda print, taking you back to the golden era of muscle cars. Show your love for your country with their bold patriotic heart designs that stand out and make a statement. From car enthusiast to proud patriot, ZJZ Designs has something special just for you. Head to ZJZ Designs and elevate your style. Visit ZJZDesigns.com or check the show notes. The All About Nothing podcast may have language and content that isn't appropriate for some. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, Nothingers, to another episode of the All About Nothing podcast. This is episode number 213. I am Barrett Gruber. All right. I am going to welcome our guest, uh, Mr. Wayne Borders, here to the show in just a second. Uh, please do subscribe to the show. Share it with your family and friends. That's how we get new listeners. Also, if you could, please consider supporting the show financially by becoming a visitor, by becoming a member, uh, by visiting our website and checking the support link. We'll have more details at the end of the show. Also, if you can, please drop a review, hit the five stars, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment. All of that helps drive our show higher in the ratings on all of these podcast platforms. Uh, real quick, I want to thank again John Costas Jr., Broadcast and Media Relations Manager of the Columbia Fireflies for our Nothing or Firefly update. You get that each week uh, as well. Uh, if you are an exclusive member, you can uh, you can hear the old uh, ones that John has given to us. Uh, I don't know why that would be necessary, but, uh, you know, if you're doing some sort of research on the Columbia Fireflies, there's audio available. And if you uh, are a patron for us, uh, John will re-record it in 1950s baseball announcer voice. That's right. Yeah, Josh right. is on first. He's looking to get on, on second. But the winning the winning run is on home plate. Right, John, right, John, if you if you heard that, no, we're not paying you. Uh, the 2024 Soda City Comic Con is coming up August 24th and 25th. There will be tons of people there in cosplay. Voice talent actors that have been announced so far, uh, which we've talked about. Peter Cullen, Michael Bell. Matthew Watterson, who is, uh, of course, uh, Magneto, uh, Adrian Hugh, Allison Seeley Smith, uh, Lenore Zahn, and uh, many more. They actually just a week, uh, announced this week that Cal Dodd, who is the voice of Wolverine. So now we have uh, Magneto, yeah, Rogue, Storm, Nightcrawler, and Wolverine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it would be really cool as if when, when we do a panel with them, if we could potentially get them to like have an argument on stage. Or, oh, or just yeah. have just have Cal just be like, get out of my face, bub. You know, that sort of thing. That'd be really cool. Yeah, uh, we'll make them uh, pretend like they're hosting a podcast. <laughs> that, would be, that would be that'd be hilarious. The X-Men podcast. Uh, that, that's going to be at the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center. Again, August 24th, 25th. Details and tickets available at SodaCityComicCon.com. Uh, so check that out. All right. On to our show. Uh, we have uh, this week uh, Wayne Borders, who is the candidate for District 89, which is uh, West Columbia, Casey, and Springdale. Uh, it is directly next to my district, which is 88. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't have anyone brave enough to run against uh, the Republican uh, in our district this uh, go 
go round, which is similar to the uh, first go round that uh, RJ may got to uh, take advantage of the uh, the lack of interest, apparently. Uh, so, Wayne, welcome to the All About Nothing podcast. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll go through, we'll go through, uh, we've got some questions and things like that and uh, they won't be too difficult, but uh, uh, are, are you originally from uh, West Columbia? Is this, or did you migrate here like me? No. So I'm originally from Houston, Texas, uh, but okay. I grew up in the Red Bank area um, from the, about the early nineties like 91 or so. Um until I graduated high school in 2001, okay. uh, attended college, and made my way back to Houston for a little bit, and then moved back here uh, a few days before Christmas in 2010. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And been committed to the place ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice. uh in, in on your website, one of the things that you mentioned is the fact that you've been you've been thinking about wanting to run for politics or, or political office since you were in high school. Uh, what was what is because it used there's usually a catalyst. There's a reason for that. What was what was the reason that that was that was in your head? What was the reason for that? Yeah. So um, just my family being, you know, uh, middle class. You know, my mother was a journalist. My stepfather was in the military. Um, it's, watching the news was a constant in our household. Sure. Um, and then at some point uh, in high school, I joined our speech and debate team. And it was there. I really realized, you know, that without some kind of like wider civic education, without some kind of... Um, real initiative in getting people to understand that running this country is, is a collective task that we have to take up as individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a whole work together project kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that's why I thought it would be cool to someday, you know, find an office um, that, you know, I would of course be living and want to represent. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, it's it, the, the, the district that you're running in district 89 is, is one that, uh, being directly adjacent to where I live, uh, is, is one that I, uh, travel through, uh, Mayor Tim Miles is somebody that, that we've engaged with many times. He's, he's a friend of the show and, uh, he's absolute pleasure to have on the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I attend West Columbia council meetings from time to time, depending on, uh, what, <laughs> which, which council member is going to be, uh, receiving a, uh, a public, uh, a public, uh, shakedown, shaming, yeah. uh, yeah, shaming. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> You know, uh, it's and it's and it's such a unique area. It's really growing. I mean, there are uh, there are so many projects on on Highway One alone that that are benefiting uh, a lot of the businesses and even residents that live in the area. Uh, you have that whole West Columbia right off the river corridor where we're seeing such uh, growth. It's it's very controlled, but it's it's really terrific growth that uh, that's going on down there. Um, you know. Uh, Black Rooster, I, I have not yet eaten there, uh, and I, I guess I missed it's, out on their it's, French. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic when it was French. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I missed out on their French stylings, but apparently I can go there for uh, pasta now, so uh, that's uh, that's exciting. Um, so what is what is something about uh, about this particular time? Because I, I, this, is, this is your first time running for office, correct? Yes, yes. So what was so what's particular about this time is the fact that we have so far been represented by someone for eight years. Uh, that person has yet to receive a majority of the votes mm -hmm. in the district, um, has only been challenged once in uh, eight years in eight years and what what have we heard about the goings on at the state house over that course of time nothing right. 
Like, when's the last time there's been a town hall? I talk to people and they can't even pronounce his name if they have an idea of who he is. Oh, so let me try. It is Kasky. You did it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so before, before both of you logged on, uh, Bill Fry and I are our, our producer intern. Uh, he and I were discussing literally that I said, Micah, <laughs> I said, C A S K E Y. Is that Kasky? Is it? Uh, and then, uh, and then we settled on Kasky. Uh, I think Bill looked it up, uh, but, <laughs> but you know, uh, I, I have heard Micah Kasky's name before mm-hmm. and, uh, there uh, but it's it's kind of like i i don't know a whole lot about him except for the fact that he does seem to manage to raise a lot of money and spend a lot of money uh whether it's you know uh, mm-hmm. we we pulled up a list of the places that he spent money uh the the Charleston Place hotel some $1700 or or whatnot uh that he's spent almost $19,000 on a republican strategist for a job ultimately that even if you do really, really well and you get your name on a ton of bills and you sponsor these bills or you co-sponsor them and you get them passed, they become law. You're still only going to make $10,000 a year. I'm dumbfounded by how much money some of these candidates seem to get. He's got, he's got some uh, political packs behind him. Uh, but, but ultimately I, I don't see, I don't see any legislation that McCaskey has has put forward or has had his name on that has really benefited the district. Um, I I will note uh, he did. He was the primary sponsor and did get passed a bill that regulated which specific size hook to use on the lower Saluda River. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Very important yes. stuff. That was early uh, on in his career. Yes. This was a. Uh, we're, we're talking about fishing. Am I right? Mm. I so, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let me let me write that down because otherwise, I was going to say he's done nothing. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, in stark contrast, not he's not a fan of Roe v. Wade, so don't hurt the fishies or the babies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't find any legislation in his record having to do anything with uh, any sort of child protection uh, uh, after after birth after birth. Uh, I haven't, I don't see anything in his uh, background having to do with uh, any uh, community programs that he's been involved with. Uh, the only thing it looks like is that he was in the Marines. I'll, I'll give you that. We, we appreciate uh, all of all that have served. Um, but outside of that, I don't, I don't really see anything of, of what he potentially uh, benefit or, or, or how the West Columbia Casey Springdale area benefits from uh, from, from uh, being on there. Um, I know I, there is, there's, there's one regarding, I guess, nuclear energy, uh, that, you know, so if, if, if we, if we see Wayne borders elected, um, we, we see your top priorities are securing and protecting women's reproductive rights here in South Carolina, uh, especially on abortion, uh, which, uh, is, uh, fundamentally for me uh and and i'm I'm gonna include zach in this as well but uh it isn't necessarily just approving of the idea of abortion but it's it's the idea that uh that abortion is a medical necessity that should be part of just uh, in general women's health It, it shouldn't it shouldn't be something that's singled out as a as a crime or or some some sort of uh, way, you know, for me, I think that it's just a, it's it's a desire by white old Republican men to control women like they could back in the fifties. Yeah, um, yeah. Because if you there also was, yeah, because if ahead. ever Sorry. there was something that was restricted for men <laughs> medically, we'd have we have arms. a problem with that. Mm-hmm. And there is a history yeah. in this country of men being denied medical care, and then we yeah. have a whole hullabaloo about that we have a whole issue and a public national conversation and we change policy we change laws and we you know make our lives a little bit better yeah like brainstorm thing for women i mean if nothing yeah. else abortion has made so many men's lives quite frankly possible to live sure you know 
whether it was your mother who had an abortion before you were born or, you know, an early relationship that both of you knew wasn't right or just, you know, people who do want to have children, but for some reason it's just not biologically possible. None of this has anything to do with the government. Right. Quite mm-hmm. frankly. And if, yeah. you're, if you're able to see that it's a non-viable fetus early on. Yeah. And I'm, and, and even, and even still, I'm willing to make a limited government argument <laughs> based yeah. on that fact too. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I, th- I think I, one of the one of the things that disturbs me most about the fact, that, you know, just like you said, there isn't anything um, that that there's nothing that I can think of. And maybe we can just play a quick game. What is what is something that could be medically available to men that uh, that if if was taken away from us as a as a human right? Wh- what is something that could be taken away from men as a human right uh, that that would could, all right. Is that a, this is, and this is how we expand. And this is how we broaden the conversation. So the yeah. history that I'm pointing to is the AIDS epidemic. Sure. Because it was a large group of men who were largely de- be either being denied health care, you know, at like the, the primary source level where doctors wouldn't want to touch you. Nurses wouldn't want to like help you too much. You sure. know, those men had a need. There was a medical issue. There was care that they deserved. And what did we do as a community? Fought for that. Yeah. What did we achieve? Now we achieve a point where, you know, we're normalizing and treating STIs, HIV, and, and really like working on that as a community, like as a state. Yeah, that's that's some of the things that government can do well. One of the one of the things that I've re- read recently out of some medical journals is the fact that they have they have either basically they they have they have basically suppressed HIV AIDS now to the point where it's no longer it, it, it eventually here in the next couple of years it's going to be viewed as is no longer an endemic because and I think and I'm guessing but I I, I believe that. Part of that reason is because the medication that has been available at such a high cost previously, those patents have now run out, which means that those those patents are available to the public and other medical uh, pharmaceuticals are now creating those same medications. They are more readily available for a much better priced cost. And now we're seeing the decline of HIV and AIDS, which if, if you're a conspiracist, a conspiracist then uh, you probably believe it was created in a lab specifically to attack uh, the uh, African-American male population anyway. Um, and but I'm not saying I believe that one way or the other, but, but you know, it's, I but, mentioned but it. It's, but it's funny, but it's funny you do go there because yes, because we are seeing in, in pockets, especially of the United States, unlike South Carolina, uh, where yes, Rates are on the decline, but then you also have medications where you can actually prevent HIV. Yeah. So, so if you juxtapose that to this conversation about abortion, uh, you know, a thing that women have been doing since before Roe v. Wade, since after the Dobbs decision, and on into the future, as long as women (laughs) and humanity will exist. Why are we even discussing something that is a medical necessity, something that, especially in a life threatening situation, if that's what's necessary to save this woman's life, then why is this a discussion? Yeah. I think too, you have a lot of willful ignorance on anybody on the Republican side to actually delve into it earnestly and honestly mm-hmm. and understand the difference between a clump of cells and a viable, you know, human being when it's consciousness, that kind of thing. Also you have you know, dogmatic beliefs that take precedent mm-hmm. over it and that will outweigh without thinking about it and testing it. They'll just hold on to what has been. This is, these are to them, you're killing a, a two year old. Right, and they won't look any further into it, which is well, is such a denial of like 
acknowledging science at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and then that gets to, that gets to, you know, the fact that mostly what we have going on in South Carolina because of the gerrymandering is national politics influencing, well, not, not even just national politics, but national groups really yeah. influencing the policy that we then put in place for our citizens to live. That's, that's one part of the problem as well, you know, considering that a lot of people who are not voting don't even feel like they have anybody to vote for. Well, you have those, you have those, I guess you could put it and correct if I'm wrong, but you would have people on the Republican side and I'm sure there's democratic side. Um, but you would have people who want to be part of that national chain, that group of fat cats that, I'm I'm with Donald Trump or I'm with so and so I'm with Lindsey Graham I want to be part of that and support legislation whether or not they specifically agree with every part of it but mm -hmm. support it to, to to hold on to that right to be part of that and yeah. get votes. Well, and that's and that's why probably one reason why my opponent didn't even vote on hmm. the abortion bills. Right. Uh, he conveniently, especially. In passing one bill from the House to the Senate, uh, voted for the for the vote to go forward, but then he had an excused absence. Mm. Well, it's only it's only a ten or twelve week session. You know, how can you potentially find, uh, especially as a, what was it? What is it? He does. He's a private. Uh, He's a lawyer. A private lawyer. You'd think that that would that would make him more available. Uh, considering what three quarters of the uh, the House and, of Representatives and, are lawyers, and it's interesting too that 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 was the first day he did it because the second time he did it was the, another time they took up the legislation. Yeah. Well, I, I tend yeah, to agree with I, my my good friend uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, as Barrett knows. Uh, we need more <laughs> not lawyers to be elected. We need more your scientists, your teachers, things like that to represent everybody. Because I mean, there were men in the general assembly who couldn't even answer the question about the approximate age a young woman gets her period. Mm -hmm. Wow. Insane. Well, you know, the, the, so in, in, in just doing, just doing a little as bit bad of as one of those legislators who thought that uh, you could, you would swallow a camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, and Zach, we make sure the from the stomach. <laughs> we lost, uh, we lost, we lost Zach's audio. Audio. Oh, uh, oh. That's okay. We're, we're good. Um, yeah, uh, uh, one of the, the or, or or what's his name, Billy Garrett, out of uh, Greenwood, who who went in front of uh, went in front of a, a committee and said that there was uh, an incident where at a Greenwood County school that there were uh, teachers, uh, there was a student that wanted to be uh, referred to as a cat and that the school went to lengths to support that individual student up to and even putting a cat litter box uh, available in uh, putting a cat litter box available in uh, either in the classroom or something like that for the student yeah. to use. And it's like, so when, when that came out, I called, every single public school in Greenwood County to find out and to, to speak with the principal or an assistant principal to find out one, was it your school that this incident occurred at? Did you all truly accommodate this student by referring to them as a cat like they wanted? Yeah. And was there actually a litter box? All of the public schools that I spoke with, all of them confirmed it was not them, that that did not occur at their school. So, when pressed, when they pressed Billy Garrett about that incident, he basically passed it off like, well, that's what I heard. And, and, and that's, that is such a cheap out in, in mm -hmm. every sense. And that ultimately is from, from our state legislatures that represent my district currently and your district currently uh, to, to, to state senators across the state. That is, that is, they, they make these accusations. They don't, they're not founded in truth. And, their out is, well, that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. that, that's what somebody told me. And it's like you, you, you hold a position of that is, that is recognized across the, the public, not only in your district, but across the state that 
you are you are making you are putting things out there into the into the public realm that have no basis of truth and you've done nothing to try and find out where it came from or why someone said it and i think that's one of the one of the biggest problems i have with the representation that we have in our, in, the, in in the republican party especially i don't i don't hear it out of the democratic party uh there there aren't individuals that i i hear them say something in front of a journalist and it gets printed and i i read it and i go well clearly tom Federson had didn't didn't do his research before he came out in front of a, a bank of cameras and, and microphones and and said this absurdity it's you, you know be able to walk of shame people who do that like yeah just blatantly just heard something and passed it along as fact Shame, 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 parading downtown around the state house. It's such a scare tactic that the Republican Party uses. And the Democratic Party, the only scare tactic I think that the Democratic Party uses is here is Donald Trump. If you reelect Donald Trump, if you reelect some of these representatives in, in, in the districts, even across South Carolina, if you reelect these people, this may potentially be the last election we get to have. Yeah, but they're too focused on the national level right so like i'm just running for a state house seat right which means i also need to understand the dynamics of what i'm walking into should i be elected i get that i would be in the minority i get that there are issues that the other side wants to work on that i'm fundamentally might be opposed to uh you know like i would like kids to eat during the summer right um <laughs> You know, maybe we could teach children how to swim, you know, opening up another like water park somewhere. Yeah. Who knows? Like state government, there's so many things that we could do um, with what we have. So who knows? Yeah. You know, but it just they depends just on what happens years. at the state house. You know, will that, will that be something that I let the people of the district in on so that they have some decision-making power. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that I feel so strongly about, you know, is the fact that, you know, we talk about all politics being local. Well, all politics, all power, you know, builds up. Correct. Because, because of the low turnout, there is a space for candidates at this level, state, municipal, you know, maybe you want to like run for a county board kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's there's enough like votes out there. There there's enough of a of a constituency to actually make these runs. It's the fact that nobody does it. Yeah, hundred percent. I I, I guess, completely agree. I guess people people have given up on the system, and I get it. I so, see why. I, you know, I, the system, they see it not working. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. And and, and so. And, Wayne, yes. some one of the, one of the things that I I find the most interesting is that that at at a at a voter level, a lot of the individuals that actually do vote for our state representatives, our state senators that that actually show up and vote, I don't know that they can clearly define what it is, uh, what is the responsibilities of the individual, uh, or what is what is the responsibility is going to be of of that office. Mm -hmm. So, in the House of Representatives. The House of the Representatives at the state level is is pretty much the purse strings. I mean, this is the group that controls the budgeting as far as the bills that get passed in order to uh, in, in order to take advantage of federal money that's coming available or take advantage or, or to use the state tax uh, funds that are coming in, uh, what programs that money needs to go to, things like that uh, in, in, in South Carolina. And then of course it has to go to the Senate where they then agree on and vote on it. And then if it, if, if everything passes, it goes to the governor, the governor likes it enough. He signs it into law. Yeah. Um, the Senate is the law side of the legislative body in South Carolina. That's where, that's where we get things like the potential of passing a bill to, allow for medical use marijuana, which is, which is one of the issues that you have on your platform. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, if let's, let's say uh, in a, in a perfect world, uh, you get to sponsor, co-sponsor a bill that potentially legalizes medical marijuana here in South Carolina. What, what do you say to people uh, 
What do you tell the voters when you're canvassing or when you're out in public talking to people? What is it that you tell them as far as how this could potentially benefit them? You know, so I've been working on that issue for a number of years. And to be honest, the people are ahead of the legislature. Sure. It. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. And so I don't think it's so much that I have to tell people how it will benefit their lives. Part of the reason I would be in the body would be to ensure that the legislation would actually do that. You know, that's when you're, that's when you need to be reading these bills carefully about exactly, you know, what tax revenue would be raised. Where would that tax revenue go? Um, and for some people, that's, you know, too, oh, I, that's too much of a conversation for them. Like, they'd rather not have that. They'd rather just, you know, well, we want it now, or how soon can we get it? Um, rather than, like I said, you know, understanding that it's sometimes about little negotiations, little push and pull of what you, of what you can yeah. possibly win. Yeah. And that's why I support pretty much any bill that has almost come across the finish line. Yeah. I know the, um, the cares, I think it's the, I believe it's the, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there are so many bills that are useful and so many bills that are absolutely not useful. It's so easy. It's easy to forget. The, it's, it's easy it's, to forget the important true. ones. And because, and because they don't bring it up a whole lot. Right. Um, and it doesn't get a whole lot of media <laughs> attention. It's true. We, we, we kind of gloss over it. Um, but there, but there was, but there is a, uh, a medical marijuana bill that was kind of close to passing. I know that it's possible to put something as well as a state representative to a vote of the body, right. to put it on a statewide ballot. See, Our I'm, representative hasn't tried that. Right. No other representative has tried that. People so, have keep calling for it, but apparently we are afraid of actual democracy in South Carolina. Oh, for right. certain. Oh, there, there is... I, I am I am dumbfounded by the fact that we still in, in, in my time here in South Carolina uh, and being a registered voter, I have not yet seen a referendum be presented uh, for the citizens of South Carolina to be able to make to vote on, whether it's abortion, uh, marijuana, uh, gun gun but legislation. They'll a, but they'll do a lot of non-binding. Oh, yeah. Refer, like a little referendum during a primary it's just their voters yeah. or, because the thing of it is, and that's another thing I would love for people to understand this election cycle. W when you register to vote in South Carolina, you are not a registered Democrat. You're not a registered Republican. You are a Correct. citizen of this state, which means as a citizen, we all have a responsibility to each other to make our communities better. Yeah. To elect the, we say, you know, a lot of people love to say, oh, well, you know, I'll vote for, whoever has the best policy, you know, the best, I'll vote for the best person rather than, you know, like the party. Well, right. here's your chance. Right. You know? Yeah. I'll, I'll so I'll, I'll just, I'll present it this way. And I, I have two different perspectives on uh, how, so or I guess two different anecdotes. Mm -hmm. um, I have for the last, uh, for the last eight years, I have, I have, I'm sorry, not eight years, six years. Mm -hmm. uh, I have operated as a uh, precinct clerk for, for, for every election that comes up. I don't, I'm not doing it this year because, or I'm not doing it for most of these elections this year because I'm the campaign manager for Matt Villardebo, uh, Matt for V, uh, Matt V for SC.com for donations and things like that. Um, but uh, uh, in, in my experience in uh, running a precinct for the elections, whether it's primaries, whatnot, I am, I am constantly dumbfounded by these non-binding survey questions that they put, that the Republicans constantly put in there. Mm -hmm. And, and, and every single time it happens, uh, I get asked the same questions by the, by the, by the voters in, in those primaries saying, well, what does this mean? I said, and, and I look at them, I go, I go, I'm going to give you a secret. 
they don't care what direction this goes or not. The only reason they're putting it in there is because their hope is, and and I could be wrong. This is my opinion from my perspective, based on observer observance of the Republican Party in South Carolina. They're putting it in there to overcomplicate the primary. And by putting it in there or putting it in the general election, they are basically trying to make it more complicated for you to stand there longer, to slow down the voting line so that people will step out of line and not vote or will say, I'll just come back after work and vote. And then they don't return. I think that this is I I. No one has to agree with me on this, but I think that the the addition of non-binding voting surveys is primarily an attempt to suppress voters. Uh, it, it's 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 absolutely absurd because uh, of the of the questions over the last few years. Thunder. Uh, we have we have a th- we finally getting rain here in, in West Columbia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cue so the, uh, either you just. We lost Zach again. Zach's, oh, Zach's no. audio went out again. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, the the it, yeah. It could have been yeah. Uh, some some all all powerful uh, individual overseeing my our, our podcast today could have potentially but, yeah. uh, so, decided. But, but I guess but the real political logic, I guess, is like those those things are supposed to be uh, like turnout generators. Yeah. For, for quote unquote, their voters, um, which, you know, across most districts, they kind of have shown us, you know, what that vote share is. And it's usually no more than 30% or so. Right. But because right. nobody runs, but because, you know, when the people who do run, you know, how I guess don't have like the right campaign infrastructure I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, I don't want well, to because in 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 your time here in South Carolina, have you seen the Democratic Party use? I, I have not seen it, so I in don't. My know. Time, so yeah, so in my time in South Carolina, I don't think I've seen the Democratic Party use use data basically very well, especially state level data. Yeah, you know, it's like who? I mean, so like. And the question is, you know, kind of some at some point, like, what do the people know about running the campaigns or, you know, speaking to their neighborhoods? I'm I'm not sure how we like what the real political process is that I guess we've been using this whole time, because if it's this whole good old boy network of relationships, then you're literally carving out a segment of the whole population. Yeah. You're, that means you don't need to talk to the other people who live in your district, you know? And, and then once you're there, what are you doing with all the money you're raising and all these in between times when you don't have any opposition? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, it's, it's, I think, I think that for a lot of voters in South Carolina, as far as, Democratic Party. I think that there's also this sort of a uh, they've just they've 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 kind of just rolled over as far as as far as the voters go. They seem to have just kind of rolled over and said, well, uh, you know, we'll you know, we'll deal with it this time, maybe next time. You know, uh, the, 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 you know, my and I, I don't follow my own advice, but, you know, anyone that whether whether you consider yourself to be a conservative, be a liberal or progressive or or moderate, whatever, if you if if you have an interest in running for office, just, you know, do it. It's not it's not the how, how much does it cost to run for uh, uh, for a state house, I, it was about $210. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, it, 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 for, for some people, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is, uh, there is, there is such an opportunity to, uh, be engaged in the system, uh, in, in the political system to be able to, uh, potentially be elected. Uh, there's so many, there are so many Republicans out there that are running unopposed that don't even have to campaign RJ may in my district, uh, mm-hmm. no one's running against him. So he doesn't even have to campaign this time last or time even, or even positions on boards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On commissions. Yeah. Yeah. 
There's one all of, kinds of things that people can be running for. One of the one of the, one of the things that the uh, the South Carolina Republican Party put before the voters in the 2020 election, uh, or maybe it was 2022, in the general election, there was a survey question that said, uh, "Would you would would or I guess the House the, the the legislative put it through because they 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 wanted an interest in the idea of whether or not uh, people would like for local school boards." to be uh, affiliated by party. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when people asked me what that question meant, I explained it the same time, same way every time that basically uh, they, that there is the legislative body wants an idea of how many people would be interested in seeing the candidates broken up, but that's not really what the question was for. If, if it had, if it had gained enough support, then essentially the idea is, is that because most voters that come into the polling precincts and they cast their vote, a lot of them just vote party ticket. They just vote party line, which means that the school boards would now be subject to instead of having being voted for individually based on the person that you would basically just be electing all the Republicans or, you know, and 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 that that to me is is very scary. Because I think an uninformed voter is just as dangerous as a ruthless dictator leader. You know, those are those are two things that 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 scare me when it comes to our election process is this idea that a, that someone who is completely uninformed and doesn't care about what the actual issues are and things like that would just come in and vote. And now you have set a precedent for at least the next four years uh, that could potentially unravel everything. 2024 general election. This is, this, it's a, it's a scary thing. Um, what is, what are some of the questions that you get from, from the voters uh, when, when you meet with, uh, with individuals, whether it's out in public or while canvassing? So, so right now it's, it's pretty, it's pretty early it's pretty, because it's so early. Sure. Uh, it's, it's a little like pulling teeth, <laughs> oh, yeah, but, but sometimes, but when I do get, but when I do get uh, some reception, uh, it's pretty much just a general, a general just confusion a little bit that, you know, one, uh, oh, you're someone who's running for a political office. Oh, you're actually talking to like us. <laughs> because yeah. I've gone out, you know, um, uh, various times a day, uh, to speak with people and sometimes they just, they just have no clue they just don't see it coming yeah Uh, because i guess no one it seems to be doing i guess that groundwork kind of campaign you know where you're actually going to people having conversations um so yeah yeah i mean that's what that's what i did for for bernie twice um and areas of south carolina like down around aiken and the orangeburg area like bamberg actually so so, uh, so you, you, you did canvassing. Did you do phone calling, I guess, for Bernie? A little bit of phone banking, but mostly, okay. but mostly a lot of on the ground on at doors. Um, but yeah, but right now most voters are just kind of just like when even is the election. Um, so that's why I make sure <laughs> you know, to have, uh, the date for the early vote and which is October 11th and then the actual yeah. election day, November 5th. So, Yeah. That also is one yeah. of the most, most scariest things out right now. Most people are just tuned out right now. That is, that is, that is absolutely one of the scariest things to me when it comes to elections is, is that uninformed voter and how, how easily for some of them, they can be influenced one way or the other. But, you know, I, I think it, I think it takes the work okay. that I keep bumping my mic. The, it takes the work that you're doing uh, to, you know, and your campaign may not be off and running completely right now because it is, it is early. Um, the, the campaign that I'm, that, that I'm working with, with Matt Villardo, uh, we walked in the, the Fort Mill, uh, 4th of July parade this week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I look forward to, to, to having Brandon Upson on the podcast because, uh, there were, there were several individuals in the crowd that were yelling, let's go Brandon and F you Brandon and things like that. And, and Brandon, <laughs> Brandon would literally turn around and look at him and be like, my name's Brandon. What did I do? You know, it's, uh, uh, it, you know, so 
but it's 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 those type of individuals that would be willing to yell obscenities in front of their children or in front of other people's children that that I feel like are probably some of the most uninformed uh, the, these individuals that 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 haven't really been engaged but have seen something on television or seen something on I, Facebook that now they're using that to support their decisions to vote. I mean, there could be there could be just the darker American history of white supremacy behind it. You know, uh, that's true. I mean, that's what all these good Christians, you know, seem to be mm-hmm. all about, you know, stopping women with their, you know, I get to sleep with whoever I want, and not have a baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 uh, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> what, what are, what are some of the things that you're going to do as far as like your campaign? Like, do you have anything planned as far as like potential town halls to, or or not, not necessarily you have planned, there's no dates in place, but Mm -hmm. you know, what are your, some, some of your ideas for, for how you're going to get out there and, and, and run your. So I definitely think, uh, as a, as a legislator, um, I would need to find ways to communicate with, you know, my constituents. I mean, everybody's used to getting all these, random political mailers that don't say anything um, or when they do it's you know generic you know we built <laughs> and it's like you didn't actually uh build that yeah. um just yeah, Barrett, Barrett got uh two mailers from two different people who were running that were the exact same yeah katrina Sheely and uh and then the woman that was trying to prime that was primarying rj may uh mm-hmm. I, I can't lorelei right. lorelei but but where were some of those mailers when some of these big uh, discussions and debates were happening? You know, like, hey, over the last two weeks, uh, the General Assembly or the House was discussing X. Yeah. You know, and then you get a mailer about that. Right. Uh, I mean, that's one way. That's I think that's a good way to spend some of that campaign money that's been raised. Yeah. Agreed. And not spent with any kind of. Over, over the you over know, the opposition over, over over the course of your time in office, from the last time you got elected to the next time you run for office, why can't you use some of your campaign money to potentially put out? They don't have to be mailers. They don't have to be. They don't have. They could just be, be a, addressed. It could be. It could be a little newspaper insert. Yeah. It could be, but something that's local. So, I mean, even if it's like a virtual meeting, like a virtual town hall of sorts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people are used to Zoom now. People, I mean, people can tune in on their phones. They like, watch TV. <laughs> it's like you know, you know. I mean, because what was because what was, and and this and this speaks to it. This speaks to it. During one of the early abortion debates in August of I think twenty two, uh, I wrote I wrote him I wrote my representative a letter. Wrote him a letter, and left it with him two years go by and then on my birthday i get some like happy birthday from your representative mail like what yeah, yeah wilson did that to me too my, <laughs> like, uh, did, like did the mailman stop for cigarettes <laughs> yeah yeah my uh my my uh, our i say my our governor uh my son graduated from high school this year and received a letter in the mail from the governor that sounded made it made it seem like it was a personal letter to him but the i guarantee you that that was a letter that was sent out uh, during a non uh, a non campaign year for go- for for oh fuck I can't even think of his name now uh, McMaster. McMasters I want to say Foghorn Leghorn, <laughs> um, but uh, but you know this is these letters are sent out at the expense of the of of us as taxpayers, uh, which I appreciate the fact that they're using the postal service and they didn't privatize it out to like uh, FedEx or UPS or something like that. Not that I don't support UPS or FedEx, but we have a postal service in the United States that is under so much scrutiny uh, at, for, for not meeting budgetary issues and which aren't their fault. Uh, and for having a, a postmaster general like uh, Louis DeJoy, who is one of oh, the yeah. greediest capitalistic, like just we, awful we human the, beings. We support the postal service. Yeah. And the um, union. Yes. So, uh, I, wh- one of the other questions that I wanted to ask you as well uh, was uh, in West Columbia, Casey Springdale. We've we've uh, 
uh, Springdale was was one of the one of the areas in the 2015 floods that that saw uh, a lot of several roads that had to be uh, detoured and uh, over years because of the flooding that occurred during the 2015 uh, thousand year flood. Um, what is in 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 your campaigning for office? What is what is one of the things that you look at as being the most important as far as infrastructure uh, for District 89? We're going to have to figure out our flooding situation. We're also going to have to probably become more concerned about the possibility of tornadoes. Okay. Um, and so we will need to make sure um, that, however, we're doing our zoning and is is I guess just as safe as possible. Um, as far we're probably gonna we definitely have to repave roads. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think there should probably be more tributary, a few more tributary roads um, because there are some of these side streets that definitely locals take, but we need to make sure that those are reinforced. So that way when traffic is possibly diverted on the highway, that there's enough, you know, spillover where people can actually like get gas supplies continue on their journey kind of thing. Yeah. Does, uh, does 378 at 26, uh, is that part of District 89? Uh, it goes right up to a part of 26. Um, and then down to 77. Okay. Fish hatchery, yeah. that sort of area. Yeah. Yeah, I was just curious. Well, you know, one of the things I think that your district is going to uh, at least the, the 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 voters in your district that they have to deal with is this huge road project on 26 that's going on 26 126 over to I 20 is this this uh, enormous project uh, that mm -hmm. that we're 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 two or three years already into it and uh, based on some of the information that I read uh, about a month and a half ago they're already behind by about a year mm -hmm. uh, and the project was gonna was forecast to take about ten years anyway. Um, similar projects like that are taking place, whether it's up 26, uh, to the Chapin area or it's, uh, going, you know, the one, I think one of the things that that's been really good over the course of the last five or 10 years is the fact that the 26 project all the way, uh, three lanes all the way to Orangeburg mm -hmm. has, has benefited us. I wasn't a fan of it because I didn't see the necessity, uh, but it has eased some of the traffic congestion going down between Columbia and Charleston, uh, or down to 95, uh, but one of one of the things I think that that people don't understand as far as like at a state level, uh, what it is that legislators do in, in, in the House is that road projects like that uh, in committee, you know, that's where those things are fought for. Every everything. Most most things get taken. They, they get fought for in committee. Mm -hmm. um, I guess. I, and I kind of want to go back to the marijuana part, because um, I think for for me. If, if if someone asked me, well, how is marijuana going to benefit me? And as as a potential candidate, I think that my message would be then marijuana directly isn't going to. But at least in committee, when we decide on the budgetary concerns of how we handle the tax revenue that comes in from marijuana sales or medical marijuana sales or regi uh, 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 recreational use, um, mm -hmm. In committee, we get to decide how that money is distributed. Whether it go, whether whether that in that whether that revenue goes to schools, or it goes to roads. This is this is the potential uh, revenue that we could use to uh, grind out and repave roads rather than just repatching. So there's a difference. There's there's mm -hmm. there's you have the opportunity to actually repair roads the correct way so that they'll last for ten years, or we're just patching them, and those patches pop out every time it gets cold enough and water gets underneath and ice pops the pothole back open or, you know, a heavy enough truck rolls over it and knocks it out. You know, that's, that's, that's the difference that a, a marijuana or a recreational marijuana revenue could benefit district 89. I, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things like when, when, when uh, traveling around Columbia, you'd go from uh, living, you go from Lexington side into the Richland side and automatically the roads improve. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but you only go about a quarter of a mile into the Richland size and the roads are improved. It's almost like, it's almost like, Hey, look what we did. Oh, we didn't do it far enough. Uh, yeah. You know, I possibly think too, like the possible ease of congestion and, you know, some of the uses of like the hospital, like yeah, possibly less prescriptions going out um, for certain opioids. Yeah. Which we already have a problem with, um, you know, maybe in the midst of some bill, I could work on something uh, to expunge records. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if I that's think something only the governor could do, then maybe that's a resolution to put forward. You know, what is uh, what is your opinion on the state of South Carolina being used as a collected a collection agency for uh, uh, hospital medical bills when that that have, that have defaulted? I th- I think it's kind of I think it's kind of funny that we don't just go ahead and using the Affordable Care Act uh, institute a like single payer system in the state. You know, considering how much Blue Cross Blue Shield has all over the state. Yeah, um, that's that's a that's a different thought. Um, but no, I I think that it's I think that it's wild that we would be a state where those call centers, I guess, would be based, uh, I guess, because of the low wage to high profit uh, margin. Yeah. Those kinds of businesses and what they collect would be good for the business and bad for the worker. But that's what, but that's what we like to do. Apparently we like to exploit our workers um, because I guess we miss slavery so bad. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. The ACA, all it does is, complicate everything on the insurance side and you could you could you could make a fund like a one-payer system off the fines that companies pay alone for not offering coverage when an employee is eligible for coverage and stuff mm-hmm. you see it all the time and well but that's well but that's why the that's in part why the affordable care act was was passed in like 2012 2013 um so that you could as just as just a citizen, you could just apply and mm-hmm. hopefully get reduced coverage rather than having to rely on employer covered insurance. Uh, one of the big problems with that is we didn't expand our Medicaid program. Correct. We still haven't expanded our Medicaid program. For some reason, we refuse to expand and, our Medicaid program. And, 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 and you know, what's crazy about that is that the, the, the reason I keep hearing that the, the Republicans in the legislative uh, bodies here in South Carolina decided that they were not going to expand Medicaid was because it was money from the federal government, but they're, how are we going to pay that back when they come calling? But I'll and stop you right there. I'll stop yeah. you right there because it's your money already, right? It's already your money. So what they're <laughs> doing is coming into your, so what they're doing is sitting in your house, the general assembly telling you, you don't need your money and then people are telling them, you're right. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I'm dumbfounded. I'm dumbfounded how easy it is to convince people. That... All because they say that it's someone else's money. Right. They claim that it's someone else's. And they're right. It's someone else's money. It's their money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is money that the federal government is is basically saying, look, we want your state to have the funding necessary to be able to take care of individuals for, for minor health issues, whether it's lacerations or it's fevers or it's, you know, bronchite, it's, it's preventative it's, health stuff. It's yeah. Pre- yeah. And, 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 and when the federal government comes calling, it's like, Hey, here's a check for, for $16 billion that we want you all to use for, you can't tell us how to spend that money. We're just not going to take it. And it's like, what the, f- what? But, but the whole <laughs> thing is like, it's, it's the people's money. Yeah. The, the federal is giving the people their money back. And we have our general assembly. We have elected representatives either, either choosing to say nothing or actively saying, no, we don't want it. That's one of the, when they were debating when back, even in, I think it was 2014 when the Senate was debating um, like the nullify Obamacare bill. I was one of the, I was one of the first like 11 people arrested at a demonstration to shut down that debate. That is just, it worked crazy. for three weeks. 
they never passed that bill. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, the lawsuits that would have, that, that would have been faced like the state of South Carolina would have had to defend itself for well, a I really was doing that before the guy, before the guy I'm running against got elected. Like, yeah. That's, I've been working for the people of South Carolina. <laughs> no, I, I, I have, uh, you know, yeah. prior to, prior to Ashlyn, uh, basically strong arming, uh, you onto our podcast, uh, <laughs> which no, I'm kidding. Ashlyn's Ashlyn's wonderful. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, there are, there are some extremely, uh, extremely talented, extreme, you, you included just, it's, it, there's a very well communicated, very knowledgeable about the issues that, that are being faced, you know, not only just in your district, but the, the way that that impacts, uh, the entire state as a whole in, mm-hmm. in, in representation. Um, you know, I, I want to go back to something that you mentioned that, you know, earlier being the minority being a member of the minority party in mm-hmm. uh south carolina legislature um you know there there are people that look at that whether they're moderates or you know moderate democrats moderate republicans that look at that and they say well i want i want my representative to be a member of the majority party because that's mm-hmm. how things get done yeah and and i have i have pushed back on that more times than i can count recently whether it's on facebook posts or things like that because for a junior member of the legislative party as a member of the Republican party, um, there is no voice there. The only people that are going to have a voice to be able to support their districts are the individuals that are coming in, not associated with the majority party because the state majority party in South Carolina being the Republican party, they already have a platform. They have already made their decisions for the next six years of exactly which, which bills they're going to try and push through the committee to get onto the floor, to be voted on and get to the governor's desk. This is a group that has such a tight control over the members of their party that when their party strays away or, or when those individuals stray away from the party, the Katrina Sheely's, uh, uh of, of the party, um, the, the, uh, the Rafe, uh, uh, um, uh, I, yeah, yeah. And... They, they, these are these are individuals that basically the Republican Party comes to them before the campaign start and say, "Look, you're out. You didn't do what we wanted you to do, and you're done." Which means that every every Republican that gets voted into office is just going to have to fall in line. You as as a as a state, they talk. You know, voters talk about change, whether they're Republican or Democrat. They want change. You're not going to get change by continuing to vote in the same individuals that, that are, are the same individuals from a party that has complete and utter control over them. There are people, there are people who've been serving since before the year 2000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I was doing before the year 2000. Uh, well, I guess I lived in Atlanta at the time, but, um, but fighting Barbara Bush. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I, I, I campaign, I, I canvassed for, uh, I canvassed for Al Gore. I admit it. I did it. Uh, you know, but, but, yeah, but, even, but there are people even serving longer than that. Yeah. Um, who are still, who are still there in part because nobody challenges them because I guess people have just given up people, Yeah, rather than, you know, I understanding, yes, I'm going in into a minority party situation, but that also will give me, more leverage and ability to do stuff in community to build our power locally. Exactly. To perhaps train up the next person uh, to take this seat, you know, because yeah. yes, it's not about, cause it's not about just like me personally running for this seat. Sure. It's like thing I want to do. Sure. Fine. Admit that. But in service of, in service of my community where I live, I get to make it a little bit better. I get to make people's lives a little easier. I get to have like people don't won't be ashamed of their government. Yeah. <laughs> I like they'll have someone accessible uh that they can call or email. Like like I remember one of the last times I called uh someone and their voicemail was full. Why is your voicemail full? Right. You don't, you don't, you're not listening to your voicemails. It's just like, it's simple, little simple things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah. So what, let me ask you, uh, as far as, 
because I think this is something that comes up uh, that, that that's likely to come up every single time. State uh, South Carolina, I think, has uh, a definite need for some uh, justice reform, some 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 criminal justice reform. Uh, South Carolina is per capita uh, a state that sees uh, more um, more African American men arrested for minor drug crimes, nonviolent minor drug crimes, than than the next the next. 10 states. Uh, it is, uh, we, it's a state that we've seen gun violence go up per capita higher and higher. We're, we're what number four in the country now. It's, uh, uh, we just had the legalization of open carry in, in South Carolina. Yeah. That, and then just a couple of weeks ago, there was a young man who was shooting a firearm from a moving vehicle, uh, an 18 year old gentleman out, out near Lexington high school. So, and that's nothing to say of, you know, the pregnant women who've been murdered over the last oh, few yeah. weeks. Oh, yeah. Or, 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 or even to go, uh, even to go um, in a different path, but the number of women that will die in the state of South Carolina, because uh, there are, what, 10 to 16 some odd counties in the state of South Carolina that no longer 14. have 14, 14. OB, OBGYNs. We, we have OBGYN deserts because... South Carolina is going to prosecute doctors, uh, OBGYNs uh, that are that that would potentially seek uh, an abortion for a woman. This is this these are these are people that have made a medical uh, decision on what is the best path for a woman's health, and the state of South Carolina wants to prosecute them. They want to prosecute the women. And and remember and remember the the representative. <laughs> the representative I am intending to replace chose not to vote on that. Right. Chose not to take a position, but was yep. cool being pictured with Governor McMaster with, you know, these door hand, these uh, like door flyers, you know, like anti trans kids and, you know, yeah. supporting women by like, I don't know, something like transgender people in sports. I don't know. It's just <laughs> madness, just madness. It's, it is, and this is, uh, a, and this is a lawyer who supports, does he support these book bans that, that just went into place? Yeah. What is does his, uh, what, what is, do, do you, do you happen to know what his specialty in, in law is? Probably, it just says probably, private practice. Probably personal injury. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all, with all nines call a keen kind of thing going on. <laughs> Ah, that's, that's, I don't that's, know. He doesn't even have a number. They ran out of, they ran out of repeating numbers in the, in the phone book. That was what happened. <laughs> right. Wow. Ridiculous. And well, they will find an insane thread and pull it until it, the whole thing comes apart. Which don't, is... Yeah. I was just going to say, don't get me wrong. I, I think there's a necessity for lawyers out there that are going to defend people that don't know how to work the system. Uh, my disappointment comes is when those lawyers become politicians and then decide that the state of South Carolina needs uh, laws that will tragically alter the uh, ownership of businesses like uh, bars and restaurants that are now required to have a liquor liability license or, uh, insurance in order to operate for places that, that, that don't necessarily even make enough money to well, pay for the license. Well, and that's it. And, and coming from the restaurant and service industry, I get that that's an issue. I get that that's a huge issue. And I've been trying to talk to some of the bars and restaurants um, in this area about that discussion, about that issue. Uh, no one, I mean, again, because it's early, like so maybe I haven't gotten to like the right people yet, but we, but I'm trying to have that discussion with people, but is that something that he is even on his radar? Right. Yeah. You well, know, there, I've, I've right heard of several, or at least or several might be too, too strong a word, but I've heard of a, definitely a couple of restaurants in Greenville having closed. Yeah. Well, Columbia, well. South, even, even in Columbia, there, there are restaurants on main street that, that don't necessarily, they, mm -hmm. they serve liquor, they serve, they, they serve alcohol, uh, but don't necessarily have the, uh, the 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 food side of of the business in order to 
move themselves out of the necessity of that particular insurance. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's creating, it's creating a hardship for some of these restaurants to be able to even, you know, operate that, that, uh, if they if they can't meet payroll, they can't continue to have workers. And then they if they don't have workers, then they eventually have to close. And then we've got we've got businesses that are closed on on Main Street or 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 on State Street in West Columbia. You yeah. know these are these are things that that it's it is it isn't. I don't think it's in the best interest of small business here in in our in our locale or in our state as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I think I, I think that uh, with the the right individuals, you included, uh, to be in legislative process uh, with the mentality that there are there are so many moving pieces of of what it takes for a state to operate, whether it's the the government portion, the law enforcement portion. Uh, down to the small businesses and then down to the individuals. But all of those pieces have to operate uh, w- with the right amount of lubrication to make sure that everything stays together but works efficiently. And South Carolina has gone through the last 24, 30 years of of being a state where there is no efficiency. Uh, you know, the, 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 party, the party that's been in control for more than two decades now has this this grasp on power and they they redistrict uh they they are they just dis- they they move district lines in order to make sure they maintain power and then um, they don't accept responsibility right for choosing not to serve the people right i think that has to be part of the message though when it when it comes to campaigning democrats campaigning in the state is is voters have to be reminded that they, if if voters if voters in South Carolina think that the South Carolina is on the wrong path and the change is needed, that they need to be reminded that the party that's in control now is the same party that's been control uh, for all of the years that that South Carolina has declined in education, has risen in gun violence, has risen in in, in domestic violence, has risen in drug vi- you know drug uh, uh, you, crimes sure. and usage. Yeah. You know these are all things that have happened under the majority party watch. And uh, it's 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 got to be changed. If if South Carolina wants to improve, it's it's got to be changed. Uh, yeah, and we and we can do it. Oh yeah, we absolutely think, can do it. I and think, it's a ma- and it's just a matter of people showing up to vote actively, not just believing in the process, but you know, forcing forcing their own power into that conversation. And then holding that elective representative accountable. Right, right. Mm-hmm. If so, you're running for office and you don't want to be held accountable, then why are you running for office at all? Yeah, totally agree. Like, what's what's the point in being there if if you, you know, you're to be that's in a the whole point of the position, a position of responsibility, or the position with the responsibility to represent individuals that that you live around or you you see on, you know, what's what's the point in doing? the representative part, if, if you're not going to, I mean, what's the part of holding that position if you're not going to do it? Um, so, uh, one of the last questions I want to ask you, uh, you get elected in November, uh, January, your first term in session after you've taken, uh, your oath, uh, what committees do you think, uh, you would, you would prefer, uh, that you be placed in? Uh, well, as a junior member, I'm sure I'm going to get uh, possibly the list of last, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the three M committee, I could see myself on that. Okay. Uh, that's medical. Yeah. Uh, medical municipal and like public and military affairs or something like that. Um, yeah. Um, another committee I might like to be on, um, they might put me on like agriculture. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, look, I think, uh, and and I'll, I'll, both of those, I think, are they're not bottom rung, as far as I'm concerned, because uh, the meta, the the three M's, the medical, municipal, and and military mm-hmm. affairs. Uh, I think for South Carolina, those are three that are extremely important and and have an impact on individuals uh, every day. Uh, agriculture, I think is the only, I think that is the committee that is going to wind up having to make the biggest argument, uh, for 
the uh, licensing and uh, addition of medical marijuana growth, uh, hemp, uh, more hemp permits to be issued. Mm -hmm. Uh, those, those are the three, I think that are, uh, that's, that's agriculture is one of those ones I think that will make one of the biggest impacts in South Carolina, especially as we go through, uh, as we continue to see climate change occurring. Oh, yeah. So I, you know, I, I, and that's, I'm, and that's why, and that's why I have the concern for, you know, the possibility of, of course, a lot more future flooding. Um, we already see it down here at the river walk. Oh yeah. Um, the potential possibility for tornadoes, which are not, you know, super, super rare in the Lexington area. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So yeah. So I think that's why those would be my, my two committees. Yeah. Okay. Well that, I think, I think, I think those are outstanding committees. And if, if you got placed on them, uh, I, if it was me, I'd be excited because those are, <laughs> those, those are, you know, I, I get that they don't get all the they don't get all the press coverage, but ultimately, I think that those are two that are important. Those 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 committees are the ones that are very important to South Carolina Uh, military affairs. You know, how many how many employees uh, being, you know, military, uh, whether currently in the military or, or, or veterans affairs, that sort of thing. Like that's a that's a very large chunk of uh, the tax paying population here in South Carolina. So those are to me, those are extremely important. So, well, yeah, uh, because then, then you have like particular issues too that I that have my concern, like the recent deaths that happened at Fort Jackson. You know, do we still do we have like some known like endpoint for those? You know? Right. And and, yes, how do, and how do we make sure that basic training continues to be safer? You know. I, I mean, sure, that's a federal issue because that's, you know, separate and apart from state government, but state government can do something, um, you know, regarding like uh, either work outside regulations or or something related to like employee breaks. Yeah, totally. I, I absolutely totally agree. Uh, so. Wayne, that is that's gonna pretty much do it for this episode. But um, real quick, do you want to do you want to do our uh, our seven questions? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't have a drum roll, but I'll 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 I'll, I'll just put this up here. It's our seven questions. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is, Zach, do you want to do a drum roll? Is a, is that is that in your ability uh, or just a national ambition? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that no that I, that one's a good one. I, I appreciate that one. Uh let's see. All right. So uh the the first question of our uh seven questions is uh what was the last thing that you Googled? What was the last thing that I Googled? Yeah. Uh and if you say the all about nothing podcast, it's gonna hurt my feelings. No so bad. <laughs> so the last thing that I Googled, it actually wasn't even on Google. Um <laughs> It was Dang on Bing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Microsoft getting a, a little was, uh, a little yeah. plug there. And it was some town um, in South Carolina. Um, might have been Timminsville. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what was the one thing that your parents did that embarrassed you the most? <laughs> <laughs> uh Oh man, there was definitely, I was running in a race and they were on the sidelines yelling at me, <laughs> to, like keep running, run faster. It's like, why are you, uh, move your legs faster. Run. I just needed to focus. I was focused. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you could have uh, one superpower, what would it be? Hmm. Teleportation has always been, always been a fun choice. Little little night crawler, I get it. Yeah, night crawler. Who's uh, instant transmission? Just gone. I mean, it beats packing <laughs> for sure. I'll stay Look, at my house. Don't don't y'all worry about it. <laughs> I, I I I say this I say this frequently enough that I think people roll their eyes when I say it, but. Uh, the day that they invent or, or, or the day that we can transport matter from one place to another, 
uh, with ac- without actual motion, uh, I'm there. Uh, if, if if I don't have to drive somewhere, if you take away that responsibility for me of having to get in my vehicle, spend money on gasoline, but if you can just trans, if I can just transport somewhere, I'm in. That's it. That's a game changer. Well, then you have the conundrum of uh, are you the same person when you're reassembled on the other end? You know what though, I I think I think I have uh, I think my intelligence is high enough that I can just ignore that part and just you, be like, you got to be good with mystery. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you die but there's another version of you living on yeah it's exactly yeah exactly all right uh what is your least favorite candy and why Ooh, least favorite candy uh do i have a least favorite candy yeah you can say almond joys or mounds no one likes this <laughs> No, probably probably those little cinnamon red candies oh, oh the, hot the, the hot or... yeah yeah, yeah. I, that's the same. Like, what's the uh, what's the what's the alcohol that, that's it just the, the like hot fire? <laughs> yeah, fire and sugar. <laughs> what's fireball. what's fireball? That's it, fireball. Mm-hmm. So I never I never used to buy buy fireball. I'd buy that's off brand uh, mm-hmm. hot damn. <laughs> wow. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was broke. I was poor. Um, <laughs> what is what is your favorite? I'm sorry. What is your most embarrassing? favorite song what's the what's the song that when you hear come on you look around to see if anybody's looking at you because you're already singing it oh god uh there's so many Uh. (laughs) (laughs) look Ladies and gentlemen, District eighty nine. Uh, this is the guy you need to uh, to, to elect I mean, because I, I love I love I, I've been playing music for a long time. I don't anymore. I've, uh, yeah, my relationship with music is, is long and lovely. Um, okay, I don't know. I guess there's what, well, you and I, I both all grew by up myself by Celine Dion. Is I guess okay. Different. Okay, um, that's embarrassing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's I good. don't know. I mean, no, there's a lot of Anita Baker that's really good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, See, like I have uh, having having twin girls that are almost ten years old now. Uh, I can't play any of the music that I grew up. To. Well, I mean, because you're 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 a child of the '90s. I mean, you, or you grew child, you grew up. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, but you know, I grew. Up, you're. I assume you're probably forty one. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was born in 79. I was a child of the eighties listening to things like, you know, when I, when I grew up, I was listening. It was poison. Yeah. I yeah. I was going to say it was, <laughs> there, it was poison. It was Aerosmith. It was, uh, uh, Duran Duran. And you know, like it was, it was a very, um, oh my God. Wham. Uh, yeah, wham. Yeah. Yeah. Love look, wham. look, I, I still listen to hollow notes now. I mean, you know, there's good, there's good Holland oh, notes to listen to. Oh, it's fantastic! But it's I'll be honest. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, but I'll be honest. When Holland Oates comes on, if somebody else is in the car at the same time, I kind of look over and go, like, "All right, they're gonna really want to hear me belt out." <laughs> yeah, but who? Do, who? Sarah who can, smiles. Who can refuse to like <laughs> not sing along with Man Eater or something. Like, yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah. And but then Nelly it... Furtado changed the game on Man Eater. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, let's see. Question number six is: uh, What is the one question that you wished we had asked you? Mm. Mm, what is the one question I wished you had asked? That's still going to um, make us look professional. <laughs> I guess, I guess why District 89, maybe why oh, I chose okay. to run here. You know? Okay. Yeah. Cause I've lived, I've lived in Columbia for a little bit. I've lived in Houston and, you know, but gr- having grown up in Red Bank and gone between West Columbia, Casey, Springdale and, you know, to Red Bank that just having gone, made that trip so many times over the years and then getting the opportunity to live in West Columbia, like, yeah. Interact with Casey, you know, drive through Springdale, you know, I think it's, I think it's important to have that, that, that knowledge of, how this place has changed 
the the a little bit of an outsider's vision of how this could be better. Yeah. Um, and just, I think it's so awesome that having grown up just around the district to now possibly being in, in the position where I could help institutionalize some change and perhaps make some things better, not just for the people of this district, but the state too. Um, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a heavy responsibility that I take seriously and that I want to do right by the people. And so, and so why I chose this district to run in is because I think this place does deserve someone who's going to be fighting for them like very hard yeah. rather than someone who can't even get 50% of the vote running by himself. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I will just say there's a reason it's called red bank and not blue bank also just to just to throw that in there uh. <laughs> hey man i i heard some horror stories about when i was even when i was a kid apparently the clan was still active over there i just so it's so i get it you know and then yeah. seeing how our state has one tried to stop people from from casting ballots because we because there was the fury over oh well we don't want dead people voting now we all have voter id now voters overcame that. Now there's the whole, well, everybody's just lying to you. Yeah. Rather than why aren't like the, the wins that we have been able to, to gain so far, you know, a couple of States where they've passed abortion into their constitution, uh, a few States where, you know, you have had underdog candidates win. I think the same is very much, ripe for happening here it's just a matter of you know one has somebody to has somebody decided to do it and then two do we as a as a populist do, do we really is is change what we really want you know right right because well, i can't force people to vote i can just tell people that i'm available to vote for yeah <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I completely agree. All right. Uh, last question. What is the one question? Oh, no, sorry. That wasn't the last, that was the, uh, that was the other last question. Uh, the other, uh, I can't find it. I remember it. Uh, what is, what is the one question that you're glad we didn't ask and you don't have to answer it? Uh, Ooh, uh, USC or Clemson. <laughs> oh, you know what? Yeah. That is a question that gets asked on here a lot. Uh, <laughs> So you don't have to answer that question. I take, it you're, I take it you're glad we didn't ask because of what I'm wearing and maybe who's also in attendance. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, it's because I don't choose sides. Um, even, even, even young, I was, I was like, man, this is not, this is not the important fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's very and, then, important. and then I lost my microphone. <laughs> Well, you've been hitting that thing like a speed bag. You're right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, it's it's gonna make a little bit more noise while I put it back in. Uh, but it's cool though. It's cool though. I get it. Everybody gets a participation trophy. Um, but no, no. So yeah. So I haven't. So I'm not. I'm neither Clemson. I'm neither USC. Uh, I drink free beer. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Where it is offered. <laughs> there it is. All right. <laughs> Well, Wayne, Wayne, we're we're really glad you could join us, and uh, and I hope we get to hear from you again. And we hope, uh, I hope that uh, we see you get elected in in November. Uh, we are we are at your disposal. If there's anything that we can do for you, um, you know, if you have uh, if you if you do any town halls or anything, uh, I'd like to know because again, I'm in the district directly adjacent to you. I'm in 88, okay. so uh, so I would I would enjoy coming out and 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 meeting you, uh, and uh, and and. You know, if there's anything that we can do uh, from a perspective of, uh, uh, you know, candidates running, uh, Matt Villardebo running up in Fort Mill, uh, he's, you know, we're always looking for connections with candidates in, in, in other areas, too. So, you know, let's let's make sure that we keep in touch and that we, we we're all driving towards the same victory. So indeed, indeed. And that's what it's going to take. It is going to take when they when they like to say on their side, a populist candidate, a populist movement. No, this is exactly what that looks like. This looks like the working people, the people who actually make these businesses money. Like it looks like us 
getting together for a collective goal. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take all of us to to really get the change that South Carolina needs in order to in order to to, to progress. The change it deserves. This yeah, is, this is ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, Wayne, what's uh, what's your website so that uh, people uh, can go so there to make donations? Can, so people can go to WB for HD eighty nine. Okay. Uh, that's F O R. So W B F O R H D eight nine dot com. Uh, you can donate there. Uh, I'm looking forward to changing it up a little bit more so I can add more content. Um, because I certainly do want people going on there, uh, seeing, of course, what I stand for and hope to do in what little way I can, but I also want people to contact me because I want to know what they, they see as important Yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, because again, that's not something that the current representative has ever seemed to be concerned with. Right. Yeah, absolutely agree. Wayne border, uh, board, uh, you, you, uh, district 89 here, uh, Casey, West Columbia, Springdale. Uh, thank you very much for being on the podcast with us. And uh, we look forward to uh, to seeing success. Uh, and like I said, anything anything we can do to be helpful, uh, you know, just let us know. Uh, Ashlyn Ashlyn is very good about uh, uh, telling us what she needs us to do something too. So, thank, thank you very you, much, Wayne. We appreciate your time, uh, especially right. on a Saturday. And I hope you got as much rain as I did. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you very much again, Wayne. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. This is episode number 213 of the All About Nothing podcast. Zach, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time as well on a Saturday. Absolutely. You know, you know. Uh, let's see. I have to read this because if I don't read it verbatim, then it, I'm going to mess it up. But I'm going to try and do it quickly, too. Links to path, past episodes. I've messed up right off the bat. Links to past episodes, podcast platforms, merchandise, and social media available on our webpage, theallaboutnothing.com. And if you think our financial model of giving away free content and entertainment is silly and you're in the giving mood, why not become an official nothing around support the show monthly? Members get early access to this episode as well as exclusive content, or you can make a one-time donation through the same link. If you think uh, you want to be a part of the show, you can call us, leave us a message, 803-672-0533, or you can email the show at the all about nothing.com or join our discord server at links available at the all about nothing.com thank you very much everybody for listening you all stay safe and yeah, keep your hands to yourself there you go the all about nothing podcast is produced and engineered by me barrett gruber thanks to cake for our intro music sick of you you can follow everything cake the band at cakemusic.com. thanks to muff the producer for our outro music you can follow muff on instagram at muff the producer i am barrett gruber you can follow me on instagram and twitter at barrett gruber or visit my link tree slash barrett gruber want to support the show visit our webpage the all about and become a member there are several tiers available including memberships that give you early access to episodes as well as exclusive content visit the all about nothing.com find links to our social media merchandise and past episodes visit the all about nothing.com if you'd like to be heard on the show you can call and leave us a message dial 803-672-0533 if the time between these episodes is more than you can handle check out our partner podcast zach and i host what the pod was that with carrie simmons visit what the pod was that.com for links and details and me takes a deep dive down the rabbit hole in episodes of welcome to wonderland available on all the podcast platforms visit wtwlpod.com for details. As well, you can listen to the political and social conversation between Dr. Jamella Brooks and Bill Kimmler on Black, White, and Blue in the South, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe and share this show. If you're on YouTube, please like and hit the notification bell. Thank you for listening. The preceding podcast is a product of Big Media and copyright 2024, all rights reserved. Hi, it's me from the Welcome to Wonderland podcast. Are you looking for the perfect blend of nostalgia and patriotism in your wardrobe? Look no further than ZJZ Designs, available now at ZJZDesigns.com. Their exclusive t-shirt collection features stunning designs like the iconic Plymouth Barracuda print, taking you back to the golden era of muscle cars. Show your love for your country with their bold patriotic heart designs that stand out and make a statement. From car enthusiast to proud patriot, ZJZ Designs has something special just for you. Head to ZJZ Designs and elevate your style. Visit ZJZDesigns.com or check the show notes.